Hello everyone, in this video we are going to study the antipsychotics. So these are the drugs which are used in treatment of psychosis that is schizophrenia, therefore also called as anti-schizophrenic major tranquilizer or neuroleptics. So begin with classification. The antipsychotics are divided into two broad categories. The first one is conventional antipsychotics or first generation antipsychotics or it can also called as typical antipsychotics. The second category is second generation antipsychotics or it can also called as atypical antipsychotics. We will be using typical and atypical term. So the typical antipsychotics are further divided into four categories depending upon the parent moiety. So the first moiety is phenothiazine. So the side chain which is attached to phenothiazine can further classified into three categories. Aliphatic side chain, the example is chlorpromazine. Then piperidine side chain, the example is thioridazine, and then pyrenzepine side chain, the example is trifluperazine. The next parent moiety is butyrophenols, and the example of the drugs are haloperidol and trifluperidol. The third parent moiety or parent structure is thiazantine, and the name of example is flupenthixol. The next are others. This category include different types of drug which has in different heterocyclic rings or structures. So examples are pimoside and logzapin. The atypical antipsychotics are clozapin, olenzapin, resperidol and quintiapin. So starting with the first category that is typical antipsychotic agent. So we will be studying pharmacology of typical antipsychotic agent. The prototype of this category is chlorpromazine. So defining is its mechanism, we know that dopamine act through several different pathways, four different pathways. So the pathway which is important in psychosis is mesolimbic, which originate from VTA and which terminate in nucleus accumbens. And through this pathway, dopamine regulates the mood and emotion. So if there is an hyperactivity in this pathway, that is hyperactivity of dopamine due to, uh, through D2 receptor, then it will cause positive symptoms, results in positive symptoms. The second pathway is mesocortical pathway, which originate from VTA and terminate in frontal cortex. So the hyperactivity of dopamine in this pathway is results in negative symptoms because mesocortical pathway regulates attention and decision making. So the, we have already defined the mechanism for antipsychotics that is D2 antagonism. So if we are given D2 blockers in this condition, so D2 blockers will act on hyperactivity and uh, by blocking D2 receptor, so it will be beneficial for us. There will be an improvement in positive symptoms, but we are, if we are blocking D2 receptor and mesocortical pathway, then there will be an worsening of the condition or insignificant result because there is an already hypoactivity of dopamine in this pathway. So the atypical antipsychotics are going to block D2 receptor. But apart from D2 receptor in mesolimbic and mesocortical pathway, atypical antipsychotics also block the D2 receptor in other dopamine pathways in the other sites of brain. And along with this, it also blocks the muscarinic receptors of acetylcholine and adrenergic receptors, specifically alpha adrenergic receptor. So it will result in adverse effect of typical antipsychotics. So, moving towards the adverse effect, the adverse effect of typical antipsychotic agent are divided into two categories, on-site targets and off-site. So, on-site target include blockage of dopamine D receptor, D2 receptor and the off-site target includes blockage of other receptor that is ACH receptor and adrenergic receptor. So, starting with first on-site targets. So, the D2 receptor can be blocked in first pathway, that is nigrostriatal pathway, or 
the uh, typical anti uh, typical antipsychotic drug can also block the D2 receptor in our last pathway that is tubero infundibular pathway so this will result in the adverse effect so focusing on the first that is nigrostatal pathway it starts from substantial nigra to striatum and ends in striatum so it is termed as nigrostatal pathway so the projection of striatum further divide the pathway into direct and indirect form so the direct pathway operates through d1 receptor and indirect operate through d2 receptor so uh, due to direct pathway there will be initiation of movement and due to indirect inhibition of indirect pathway there will be inhibition of purposeless movement so if we are blocking d2 receptor then it will generate condition like parkinsons in parkinsons also there is a decrease in dopamine level and in this condition we are blocking dopamine receptor so dopamine is not able to act so thus blocking will leads to uncontrolled motor activity thus the blockage of d2 receptor in nigrostriatal pathway can lead to parkinsons like symptoms so the symptoms are categorized into a major category that is extra pyramidal symptoms or extra pyramidal syndrome which we will be studying in detail in the next part and the blockage of d2 receptor in the tubero infundibular pathway the pathway which originate in hypothalamus and end in pituitary the dopamine through this pathway inhibit the release of prolactin so if we are inhibiting dopamine then there will be an increased release of prolactin this shows different symptoms in male and female have different effect in both so in male it cause gynecomastia and decrease in libido gynecomastia means presence of feminist character in male that is increase in breast or mammary gland and in female it will produce amenorrhea galactorrhea or it will show po uh, false positive pregnancy test then offsite adverse effect these are again divided into two based on the receptor if it is blocking peripheral muscarinic receptor then it will show action like anticholinergic drug anti muscarinic drug and the prototype was atropine so it will show atropine like symptoms so it will show dryness of mouth then constipation followed by urinary retention and loss of accommodation the term is used for the accommodation of vision so there will be a blurring of vision because the vision is not properly accommodated then the blockage of or antagonism of adrenergic alpha receptor leads to adverse effect or the symptoms which is similar to the antiadrenergic so it can be hypotension or sedation depending upon which type of receptor it blocks that is central or peripheral then this adverse effect can also be studied in the terms of potency so potency is a minimal concentration of drug which is required to produce action so if the drug possesses higher potency or has high potency then it shows that minimum concentration is going to show prominent effect then therefore it define the selectivity of drug so highly potent drug will have high affinity on d2 receptor so it will it will be going to show more side effect associated with the d2 blockage than the off site so there will be more eps extra pyramidal symptoms and prolactin effect but in lower potency drug low potency drug it has less selectivity because of low affinity towards d2 receptor therefore it will be blocking more adrenergic and cholinergic receptor so it will show more off site side effect or adverse effect than the eps and prolactin so next moving toward the pharmacokinetics of chlorpromazine so the drug can be taken orally and the absorption is erratic and irregular then the drug has low bioavailability and high plasma protein binding the drug uh, is more concentrated in brain than in plasma the drug has larger volume of distribution that is 20 liter per kg and metabolized by a specific liver enzyme that is cyp2d6 
the tf of drug is approximately 18 to 30 hours and it is excreted in urine and by next moving toward adverse effect we are going to concentrate adverse effect in one frame so starting with adverse effect it is divided into three category extra pyramidal disturbances then effect due to the pro, uh, pituitary d2 blockage that is gynecomastia amenorrhea and galactoru galactoria then the other effect due to blockage of adrenergic and cholinergic receptors so starting with extra pyramidal disturbances which is important one these are divided into parkinson's tremor then tardive dyskinesia acute dystonia and acanthesia so in parkinsonism we have parkinson's like symptoms then in acan uh, acute muscular dystonia we have uh, di muscle dystonia that is muscle spasm specifically in jaw torticollis and tongue uh, thrusting then we have acanthesia which is due to cns side effects and then we have tardive dyskinesia which is purposeless movement of face trunk and limb moving towards the next category that is a typical antipsychotics the atypical word stand for absence of typical side effect which are associated with the first generation antipsychotics so the prototype of this category is clozapine it act through blocking d2 as well as serotonin receptor this uh, possess less side effect or as adverse effect and it is safe for refractive schizophrenia when there uh, the patient are not responding to the typical treatment thank you if you understand the concept then please like and share the video